Welcome to the first ever WCI I Engage Fireside Chat. I'm Robert Hartley. I'm delighted to be joined today by Claire Burrell. Claire, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Claire Burrell, I'm the Senior Warden for the WCI and delighted to join you for this first Fireside Chat. Thank you. I thought we would start with talking about your position in WCI and then we could dive into your insurance career. Okay. So, how long have you been a member of WCI? How did you find out about it? So, I joined the WCI in 2015. Um, I was introduced by past master Graham Dickinson. He invited me um, to an event at the uh, Fishmongers Hall on London Bridge, which is famous for very wrong reasons these days. And um, I went into the room and I thought, oh my goodness me, there's a lot of important people in here, I'm not sure how I fit in. And I sat at the, at the lunch and we had a most excellent speaker and actually the table conversation was fantastic. And I learned more about the livery um, and I went to a couple more events and then I got invited to join and I thought, mm, actually, I think this is going to be interesting. Um, so I joined. Uh, that's kind of that history. Yeah, I think likewise, you know, same as myself, you get invited to an event, you see how much fun it is and the networking and uh, you, you want to sign up. Yeah, absolutely. And you've very quickly kind of got involved in the livery um, and uh, one of the things I, I saw you, you've done is uh, get involved with the Lord Mayor's show. Yeah, so I think, I think when I first joined the livery, um, I lived down near Brighton and I was working locally and then I changed tro- jobs um, into working in the city. And actually that gave me the opportunity to, to, to attend more things. And I went to um, a lunch, one of the informal lunches on a Friday, I walked into the room and I thought, okay, <laughs> what's going on in here? Um, and I had the fortune to sit next to um, Terry Masters, who was junior warden at that time. And in my, um, my best approach, Terry said, what do you think of the livery, Claire? And I went, well, I just walked into the room and I felt quite uncomfortable and I couldn't be identified as a member. And we had a really good conversation um, and Terry said, well, get involved, do something. Get yourself into it, don't sit as a bystander. And I went away and I contemplated that and then I got introduced to Nick Smith, who was the chair of the livery committee at the time. And he uh, kindly invited me to come along to a couple of their livery committees and I got asked to join, um, which I did. And then I think, you know that thing where they say volunteers and everybody steps back and you're left at the front and they said, well, we'd like to do the Lord Mayor's Parade. Um, in previous years, we've just run that by joining other modern liveries, but we were getting to a point where the WCI kind of wanted to make its presence known um, within City Civic and we were starting to look at our approach, working with common councillors, etc., sheriffs. Um, and everybody stepped back and I was still standing. So I said, okay, I'll do that. Not a clue what that involved. <laughs> I did learn quickly. Um, but what a fantastic experience. So there was a very small working committee working with Terry at the time, um, as he was he was up and coming master. Um, and we wanted something that worked for the general public. The Lord Mayor's Parade is about parading the Lord Mayor around, introducing him to the, you know, his, his people of London. So we needed something that resonated and insurance is a bit, nobody really understands that. And um, so the team came up with the slogan, London insures the world. And then we're like, well, what do we do with that? So we got to the conclusion of creating this enormous balloon with the world on, with the logo on it. And then we had to work out how to get that made. Um, Luckily, the company that I was working, the insurer I was working for at the time, had an amazing events and marketing team, and they put me in touch with a lady who worked um, doing Notting Hill Carnival. Not a problem. She was just perfect. So we did that. We got a parade. We got sponsors, um, and the rest they say is history. And now we have a committee that looks after that and does an absolutely fantastic job making sure that that's just like a machine each year. So there you go, that's, that's where I got to with that. From, from the livery committee, um, I became chair of the livery committee when um, Nick ended his term, we do sort of two, three year stints. Um, I was asked to take over that, and I'm a bad planner, great organiser, I think is how I would describe myself. Um, so 
started looking after um, the livery committee, got invited to the court. How you get into the, the chair of junior warden, senior warden and master, still a bit of a mystery to me. That's not my choice or selection, but the more I got involved, the more I enjoyed it. We did the first Sheriff's Challenge, which is working in school, um, year 12s, uh, lower sixth in older money for our audience. Um, working with schools um, in a debating competition where the final was held in the old Bailey in court number one in front of high court judges. Wow, those, those students are amazing. That is the most terrifying experience. But working with them, coaching them, teaching them their debating skills, um, and that, that's just a fantastic experience to see what you get at the beginning and, and what the students are able to deliver at the end and the confidence it gives them. It's just brilliant to watch. There's so many different things that we do as a livery that if you've got the time and the inclination, uh, the world's your oyster, really. That's fantastic. Thank you, Jane. That's a really good dive into uh, how, you, how you've gone through the livery and how you've ended up as our senior warden. Um, yes. So, yeah, thank you. That was a perfect journey through. Um, and uh, it's the next exciting step for you. Um, you're now on route to now become a next master. I am indeed. And, um, I'm ashamed I'm not going to be able to make you on the dinner, the organisation dinner. Well, I'm Pop. sure there's some penalty for that. We have fine livery fines, I'm sure yeah, I can find them. Yeah, thank you. It's unfortunately clashes with a conference in Vegas, so, you know, okay. these, these things Fair. happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, these things happen. <laughs> and, if you win uh, big on the slots, let me know. Uh, yeah, yeah, let me know, for sure. Um, and so, your role, how do you think it will change when you go from senior warden to master? Oh, it, it, it's going to be an absolutely huge change. Um, so your junior warden year is really starting to learn sort of the underworld of the, the city civic. There's lots of things going on. I mean, the, the livery companies are, as a whole are one of the biggest charity donators um, in the UK. Um, they do so much work. And as you start in this junior ward and you start to do more of your livery connections and city civic and working with other liveries and actually how we can collaborate and, and drive change, um, so it's, that's really interesting to start learning that. There's also quite a lot of ceremonial things that are very traditional. You know, we talk about the Great Twelve, the four founders of our livery organisation. Um, then there's sort of the mid-range and we're described as a modern livery um, reflecting modern trades and, and as you know to be a member of our livery you have to trade in insurance mm -hmm. and you have to be connected to insurance. So junior warden you kind of learn the ropes. Senior warden is, is um, for me has been much more about working with our internal committees, understanding how they work, work working with the charity, working with the clerk's office. Um, and it is a little bit like running a very small business. You've got a P&L to take care of, you've got your membership to take care of, and in effect you're, in you know, business terms, the CEO. Um, the bigger part of the role, um, and certainly for me, I am so, so fortunate, because this year, um, not only will we have Nick Lyons, who's our current Lord Mayor, who's also a member of our company, we have two sheriffs that are due to be elected into office next week. Um, which is uh, older woman Dame Sue Langley um, and older man Bronick Masiada and I think both names will be uh, well known to our membership um, and they're both sheriffs and this is the first time in history that one other company has had two sheriffs as far as we're aware um, and one master uh, so it's so exciting so there's um there's a level of ceremonial involvement that perhaps we've not been involved in before being a mother company um which goes full circle for me so we started with the lord mayor's parade and this year i actually get to go in a carriage yeah. how fantastic <laughs> is that that is fantastic so yeah. exciting <laughs> um, so i think for me the, the change is really if i sum it up representing um, the livery movement and our profession both within city civic but also that broad, broader footprint of our industry and working with our sheriffs who've got really similar themes to what we're trying to do within the WCI. This is about accessibility to our industry and our profession, how we work with um, our hidden communities, you know, those ones that are 
you know, live not too far from our square mile that think we work in ivory towers. Actually, we don't. We're all normal human beings. How do we get those? How do we get that that diversity and inclusion? Um, and remove some of those barriers to get people into what is a great career. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, lots, lots to do, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah, well, and equally nervous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's fantastic. Well done, what you've done with the Lord's Mayor show already. And great for Sue and Bronick to now be stepping up as sheriffs as well. Yeah. So they'll be sheriffs when you become masters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they they, they, yeah. they go into office next week. Yeah. Um, and then I take office on the 11th of October, which is our common hall, which in livery terms is kind of changing of the guard. Yeah. Um, you serve a one year term um, and you do a common hall, which is kind of like your general meeting. Um, the outgoing master does a, an update of what's happened in the prior year and then the new master sets out goals for the future. And are we allowed a sneak preview of the goals or do you want to keep them? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I'm, I mean, anybody that, that knows me or will have spoken to me knows that I absolutely bang on about how we recruit people into our industry and the perceived barriers that we have and how we, um, we're just not accessible. Um, we are a vessel as an insurance um, group organisation that needs lots of different skills and capabilities. We don't all need to be an underwriting professional, an actuary, a broker, or a claims person, which are probably our traditional um, roles. You know, we need analysts, we need scientists, we need marketing people, we need people that look after our buildings, we need IT people, we need technology. We've got to build products that deliver to the future. How are we doing that innovation? How are we taking, um, and you've got children and and I've got children, how are we taking the way that they learn and what they're going to need to protect their futures? How are we creating jobs for them using old definitions and learnings? We've got to change it. We've got to make it accessible. I don't have all the answers, but I've got a view that working with the WCI in the reach that we have both from an industry professional working with the CII and other professional bodies um, and our membership actually we're in a great place to be I'm going to use the word aggregator because we're an insurer and working insurance but aggregate those things together be a destination so we can say oh you want to learn about that we know the exact people here join this link move over here they'll be able to help you with that, you know, and just, I'm, I'm really passionate about what we do for a living, we're here to protect people, protect companies, how do we actually just be more open? Mm-hmm. Yeah, brilliant. So, so I, there, there's, yeah, there's the challenge for all our membership. There is, yeah, and you're absolutely right, in the insurance industry covers everything, it mm-hmm. covers for all sorts of all walks of life, every business, every yep. individual is somehow um, uh, using it or you know, buying it or impacted by it. And, and, and so as you know, someone coming into the industry, they've got a great opportunity to be able to try different areas. And just think about you know the global economy, nothing gets built, nothing sets sail, um, nothing, you know, we don't have a satellite for our mobile phone unless we have some insurance cover and somebody is taking the risk. Mm-hmm. We probably need to be renamed risk, but that's... Mm-hmm. That's bigger than delivery. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, you touched on, um, let's, let's thank you so much, that was a great insight into the WCI life. And sort of I thought now we could, as a sort of nice segue from when you talked about inclusivity, I thought it'd be quite a good uh, an intro into your life and in insurance because I remember starting 20 years ago, it wasn't it's very much a white male industry or mm-hmm. male dominated. And uh, you know, I was interested in how you, how you found that when you came in. What, what made you think of insurance as a career and did you find any roadblocks and, and how you yeah, got okay. it? Yeah, um, that's a big question. It is. Um, I didn't find insurance, insurance found me. Um, I, um, I grew up in a tiny little village in North Yorkshire, as you can tell from my beautiful accent, um, and I moved to the metropolis that was Leeds. Um, and I got two job offers. One was in a law firm, um, doing administration for a law firm, and the other was in an insurance company. And I just like the feel of the insurance company better, so I joined as a fine clerk in their claims department for what was back in the day, Steer Drake Insurance. Yeah. And the rest, they say, is history. Um, 
I just, I loved it, I progressed, became a team leader, an office manager, um, and then, you know, just stayed in insurance. My, my discipline, my original discipline is claims, but as I moved through my career, um, I kind of had a, a, either fixing a problem or creating something new, so kind of working in that change agenda, which moves you into where I am today, kind of in a COO world, so you know, you understand the breadth. You start life as an absolute expert in something in your insurance career, and the further you get into it, the more, um, you know, you, you're not an expert anymore, you're much more of a broad scope person, I think I would reflect that. Barriers um, or challenges, I think um, definitely when I started, there wasn't any female directors or very few female leadership, and if there were female leadership, they were often in um, HR or marketing, they weren't in underwriting claims, etc. Um, but I never perceived that there was a barrier. For me, it was always about your skills or your ability. I think the biggest challenges, um, and I'm much older, um, was things like um, taking maternity leave and then coming back in your maternity leave was quite short. Um, coming back into a business and having that sick baby at home or you know having to flex a little bit in the days when that didn't happen oh my goodness thank goodness for paternity leave and hasn't COVID been amazing because I love it now if I put an 8.30 call in and, and one of the guys on the call goes sorry school run can we move it I'm like yes that's exactly what I want to hear um, and I'm me very fortunate um, Andrew my partner you know we co-parent um, and I mean, we both have full-time jobs, so it works, and um, our kids have understood that all the way through and have always communicated well. So I think maternity, coming back in, um, recognising your career break, um, trying to balance fairly senior roles, um, meetings, board meetings with small people that are often not well, and um, particularly when you first go back to work, I think that was really challenging. And then, um, and this is probably an inside challenge rather than an outside challenge, but as, as you progress further and recognising there wasn't always other female leads when you get to board positions, um, just your tone of voice, the way that you articulate things, the way that you think is often very different to your male colleagues, so you can be sat in a board meeting and you can say something and there's kind of, oh. There's a different tone of voice in here, there's a different way of thinking. And it took, personally, it took me a little while to realise that that still had the same value. Um, and my voice and opinion was there, I wouldn't be making it if I didn't think it was an important, important point. But it took me a while to recognise that. Um, but I think, I think we've come such a long way. We've still got places to go, there's still pockets of challenges in our industry. but. You know, I've only worked in the London market since 2016 and personally I've not had any issues um, with any sort of restriction around being gender, you know, female gender at all. That's great. Yeah, it's yeah. good to hear. And I agree, I think the industry has moved on massively in the, in the 20 years that I've seen. And it has. And it's, it's wonderful to see. Yeah. It's got to be about capability and ability. Yeah, it should always be about that. Absolutely. Always, I agree. And, and, and as you say, having that diversity gives you breadth of knowledge. And that, that's also one of the things I like about the WCI is when you go to those networking events, you, go, you get that breadth of knowledge of people in the room, and there's so much to learn. The WCI, we have got a great statistic. Um, the WCI has a, a court, which is an effect board. Yeah. Um, and on our court, uh, we're at least 50% women if not just slightly over. That's great, yeah. That, it, it's fantastic. Thank you for that, that was a great insight into, uh, into your career so far. I was thinking, what, if someone coming into insurance knew, what sort of uh, advice could you give them to kickstart okay. their career? Um, what would I say? Um, careers aren't linear. You don't you don't naturally go that way. You go broader often, side to side. Um, a job role is a job role. When you start doing the job, it's actually what you make it. What's written down is sometimes so. Um, and I think perhaps more so for women, there's a statistic that says 
um, uh, a woman would need to know at least 95% of the job before she accepted it, whereas uh, a man would go 50%. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I think somebody quoted that last week at something I was at. Um, actually, it was uh, Dame Sue Langley quoted yeah. it. Um, and there's some truth in that, but actually, if you look at a job all written down, it's actually how you interpret that and how you deliver to that. Um, so I think always be yourself um, and be kind because I don't think that costs anything. Yeah. But if you work hard, the rewards will come. That That's natural. That's, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you. That's great advice. And um, I suppose feeding into that, maybe three things you could tell me about how, what you've learned through your career. Oh, that's... Um, that's quite hard. Um, always ask questions and don't assume. Insurance has lots of acronyms and all sorts of things. Just to ask the question, never assume. Um, work hard, you will get your rewards. Um, and keep perspective and humour, because on the difficult days, they're probably the things that you need. Um, they're probably my th three things. Good point, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think I could add to that. Don't send an email when you're angry. But, uh, oh, safe to draft. That's a great yeah, safe to draft. Safe to draft. Yeah. I forgot that Pick one. Pick it up again later. Yeah. You? <laughs> it's never too late. It's no rush. You can always come yeah, back yeah. to it. Yeah, don't, don't text from Keith. Yeah, don't text from Keith. That's drunk. a whole yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Well, thank you. I think we're just on to the sort of last now. Fun facts, if you have any. So what three facts we might gain about you from personal or um, professional? I, I'm not sure I have them, but yeah. um, I think for me, I, you get what you see. I, I, I don't have different layers or different levels. Um, I'm quite direct and transparent as a person. Um, what do I do outside of the WCI? That kind of takes up quite a lot of my time. Um, obviously, the classic mum's cab. You know, mm -hmm. got to do that, taking the kids here, there and everywhere. So that's probably been about 15 years of my <laughs> life. Um, other than that, I think with the family, just making memories. So making sure we do some silly things, some good things. Uh, my oldest daughter, you know, much to her dad's disgust, I bought her a, a, a 10,000 foot aeroplane jump, parachute jump. Because you've got to have that memory, haven't you? Yeah. Um, so doing things where we can make memories as a family, I think, is is important because those things are what stick when you get older and you remember rather than just the mundane of oh, I'm so busy. Mm. So try to do those sorts of things. Um, my uh, my family are all kind of um, like planning and warning, and I'm a bit more. Um, I like organising, but I don't necessarily tell everybody the plan. <laughs> so sometimes I'm like, oh, we're doing this today, and they're like, oh. <laughs> um, so I would say making memories, that's important. That's great, thank you. That's brilliant. Well, that, that, that's all I have to ask. Is there anything else you may want to add to anything? I think we've covered a lot. No, I, th I think just um, out to the membership, uh, you know, ask questions, talk to people, we're all approachable. Don't ever feel that you're not included um, and the doors open. That's great. Well, thank you, Claire. Thanks okay. so much for coming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you.